a kind of Blade Runner Deckard or a replicant kind of storyline. So this is a story I wrote called Carol Who Deals in Boxes. I looked up above at the nebulous vortex that grew and spiralled above my bedroom window and I left out a huge groan. The kind of groan that feels like it swells like concrete from the base of your stomach, gurgling slowly upwards like some horrendous snake. That was it. This was the moment I'd waited for so long. Singularity Apocalypse by any other name. The great unveiling, a whole new world opening out into an infinite horizon, light floods into everything. I closed my eyes and let it flood over me. Just another night in the box. Just another night. Boom! It kicks in. And I'm gone. Carol was 15 when she first jacked into the boxes. 18 when she proceeded to cranial input. 20 when she finally transcended. 34 when she started to lose track. Her memory growing fuzzier than the background radiation of the dead stars looping infinitely on TV sets. But it's always in the static that something eventually emerges. As Carol lay cold and stiff on a metallic table, eyes blacker than black holes and staring into fractured endless blood. This one's an interesting case to start you with, Sid. Young woman, 34, found jacked in and mind faced in a room, left for dead it would seem, but whoever she counted as friends. Might be a good one to start you off with, buddy. A clean dive, all safe of course. You'll get to swim in a memory, like the training said. Find a memory of something concrete, and powerful and try to get it to focus on that that's always a safe bet on your first dive sage advice if you don't mind me tooting my own horn Sid looked down a feeling of unease and disquiet descended upon him his usual nervous disposition intensified the awareness that he would be soon jacking into the young woman's mind into a living breathing human being's most private space or brain her thoughts, her loves, her hates, every lost moment, every disappointment, every passing joy and echo of laughter would be his to explore and experience, or to find a way to bring her back from the limbo now where she now inhabited in the meta space of box death. A fate worse than dead. Death, alive but lost in an unending dream or endless nightmare of the Matrix of the self. He was afraid, afraid of the depth of this, this responsibility, but he knew he had to be brave. He had to chosen this path. Four years of intense meta space training had led him to this moment. He had to be strong, had to wipe that sweaty brow, steady those trembling hands, breathe. Ready to dive in? The box technician asked. Sid just nodded and took a deep breath. Lights out. Sid felt the extending cord rip into the cortex like a drill, stabbing into wet flesh, jolting for a second before the pain. The pain, it was unreal, like nothing he'd ever felt before, a lightning bolt of energy flying through his head, his spine, his very being. Shit, shit, something's going wrong. Sid heard the panic in the tech voice, but Sid couldn't quite stare on anything now. With the intense pain, screaming as white noise filled his head. What the fuck? What the fuck? The tech screamed once again, louder this time. Shut it off, shut it off. God damn it. I will not lose another trainee. The pain, lowering down to each name and extending out like some kind of digital crucifixion. I've never seen this. I've never seen this. The tech numbers, the two minds are urging. What the fuck is happening to his body? His fucking eyes, man. Turn this goddamn thing off, you idiot. Turn it off. Then the pain stopped and the lights finally went out. Hello, world. Hello, says a quiet female voice. Uh, where am I? replied Sid and Ford. You're in our head, she responded. What? Hello, world, and welcome to the box, Carol, she said again, giggling quietly. Sid obtains a feeling of awakening. What's going on? Who are you? I'm Carol. What? We're Carol. Uh, no, I'm not Carol. I'm Sid. You're Carol. Where is my body? What's going on? I didn't need bodies in the box, Carol. Who are you? I'm Carol too. One Carol and one Sid equals... Carol too. Sid looks around the space he now inhabited, if it could be called space in any conventional sense of the word. Staring down, he saw nobody, no matter to represent himself, simply an infinity of geometric shapes crashing and recombining around him through thought represented as matter, shapeless, formless space, a dreamscape of truly epic proportions. Aren't you glad we brought ourselves here? The female voice sounded again. We were soft, calm, motherly, and Sid felt strangely comforted by it. Why are you calling me Carol? 
Carol's the woman I was brought here to save. I'm Sid. I was an attack like Rudy really jacking into the box to save her life. She's on the precipice of complete brain death. Another sad victim of serious boxing abuse and addiction. Do you know what that is? Of course I do. Quite angrily this time. I'm sorry, Sid. Really realising that he must be talking to Carol herself as he came around to full consciousness. He must be Carol's subconscious. No, that's not right, we're Carol, Carol, I'm Carol, and so are you. Carol responds. The shapes and atmospheres of the mental space projecting from Carol's mind begin to morph now. The light getting progressively duller, bright geometric shapes replaced with more amorphous organic threatening and shifting dull blocks. She was obviously starting to get distressed. Please, Carol, try to relax. I'm here to help, so try to reassure her. You don't even realise what's happened, do you, Carol? Try to remember I am Sid, Carol. I'm here to wake you up, to help you return to your waking life. It's very important that you trust me. Ha! Carol snores. The shapes in the meta space now morphing into a strange cartoon-like forms, shifting in and out of existence and taking on an entirely harsh and hallucinatory aspect. You don't realise what has happened. You have no idea, do you, Carol One? Carol, tell me what's going on so I can help you. happening to him what could cause what happened to him what could cause that kind of extreme reaction in a subject can you seek his consciousness in the mind phase between angry pacing up and down the lab staring intensely at this time sorry but the pace is gone how is this possible Healthy bronco, physically and mentally fit, fucking spontaneously combust on his first fucking dive. Oh Christ, the smell! Talk to me, talk to me. I'll be holding the first thing he's got to me. Okay, okay, just let me run some diagnostics in Carol's box. He appears to be fine according to the readouts on the mind page. Perfectly reasonable heart rate, normal mental function. It's like the energy released was somehow just in one direction, like a I don't know the words apart from spontaneous, psychic combustion. I've seen people getting shot and dodgy box shoots before. Nothing like this. I'd do a really bad arm job. I don't care what it takes, Lucy. Fucking well, find out what caused it, or it's your ass, your job, or mine, probably with it. Lucy grunts, his steps heavy as he walks hurriedly out of the dense, cloistered and stinking metallic room to leave the text to his test. Fuck, thinks Lucy. I will not enjoy writing the report for this one. You're dead. What do you mean I'm dead, Carol? I'm here to help you. What was all that about a meme virus? I read about them, Carol. There's just an urban legend. A scarcely toiled by the neo -ladites. Let me show you, Carol, one. It will all become much clearer if you just manifest this truth in this meta space. We have much to do and I can't do this alone. You'll be the first, Carol, one. The first born of the chosen Carols. Carol then blinks, or abstract form at least approximate it. A graphical line roundly inverting itself in and out. The metaspace changes, dissolving walls surround the abstract Carol cascading down in abstract light as the scene dissolves into nothingness. A room appears, a dim room with a strange green neon pouring Linda over various mind machines on fellow even Smith and a maze of wires in the neon ambulance. Ambience. Ambience. Do you remember this place, Carol 1? It's where we performed our best work, our masterpieces of mind design and meta space development. We do remember this, don't we, Carol? Sid's form, abstract form, stiffens and froze. He's seen this before. Hack space is really underground, mind face, hacking stuff. What did you do here, Carol? What have you done? What is happening here? The more you tell me, the sooner we can get you out of this. I'm a hitter. You don't fucking get it, do you, Carol? We're both dead. We're not dead in the traditional sense, which transcended into pure information. You especially so, Carol One. We created this world in our room, remember? 
Just remember, you and me, I am you, we are Carol, there's no separation here, no individuality. We're the future, and the future is a world of infinite possibility, infinite creativity. We are gods. Why bother the world above when we can do this? The mind say suddenly clears and the lights go up again. Technical errors. Christ, thinks Greg as he frankly extols the diagnostic logs and error printouts from today's session. What the hell happened today? I better find some way to solve what caused the disaster, otherwise I'm gone. Greg's eyes scan the logs. Massive energy spikes, of course, on Sid's side of the log, but strangely, Greg notices nothing that seems out of the ordinary on Carol's side. That was where the mystery must lie. He quickly glances over at her, still brain fried from the box, staring out into the nothingness with blank eyes. It never ceases to give me the chills. Even after all these years, he thinks of himself. Maybe a physical examination of Carol will bear some fruit. Best get the brain scanning kit out for that. It's going to be another long night. Rooster pulls into the headquarters quickly. Determined to file this report as quickly as possible. Might even have to do a quick cover up job on this after all. DDA, another good fuck up. And the Neo Luddites will have a field day if they find out what it is. Lucia runs upstairs, ignoring his colleagues and pushing through to his desk. Sitting at his chair, he prepares for the long and unforgiving night. Sting the cap in the end and pack his cigarettes to see him through to the end. Greg, get a bit, get a touch here. To himself before buzzing in through an ASAP information request. We're after the door. Where's it? There we go. Sid loses his self and consciousness for what seems like an eternity lost in the depths of blissful unconsciousness before being jolted awake by the sight of blades of grass, light pouring in through the gap. It's a warm day for a late summer and a nature clearing. His thoughts turn to. Voice of an old man, drenched in wisdom. Grandfather? says an unfamiliar but young voice this time. Grandfather, please pursue me again, says the voice again. A young girl, probably about eight or ten. But Sid, whose vision was still blurry, couldn't seem to make out the source. Another day, Carol. For now, <laughs> the cyber cube can wait. There are more important to things to attend to, my dear, like you going to bed, young lady. It's way past your bedtime already. Your mother would be so mad if I knew I let you stay up this late. You know what she's like, no more filling her head with these junk stories. But alas, I cannot help being that where I am. A humble old engineer filled with dreams. You told me about them before, Grandfather. Tell me again, what engineers do. Another day, Carol, another day. For now, bedtime's hurry and then you must sleep. You have a long day tomorrow, remember? Okay, Randall. Sid's vision returns, but the scene and atmosphere has changed. A girl, probably about 12, sits crying in the corner of an unkempt bedroom. She is slight and thick, with thick rimmed glasses and mousy brown hair. Posters adorning her small and untidy room, but not the posters one would normally associate with one her age. Her room is covered in posters of great scientific figures Einstein, the revolutionary 20th century Carl Sagan, the American educational figure and cosmologist Alan Turing, the com English computer genius Marie Curie, the physicist, and then some more contemporary figures like Max Bernstein. Beckstein, the genius behind the cybercube infrastructure and source code. Sid looks at the girl, trying to determine what is upsetting her. He realises she can't see him, and wonders why Carol is showing me all his memories. What's wrong, he says, but she cannot hear, like a block of invisible concrete had fallen like a gulf between them. The scene jumps forward, some months, and Sid hears two raised voices. The first, a soft female voice said, I don't know what's wrong with her, Ted, she just won't come out of her room. We need to talk to her, whereas we might need to... Intervention. The male voice responds. Don't say those words to me. You know what they did to my grandfather. Sarah, it wasn't the cyber cube that caused that. We've been through this. It was a combination of old age and shut up, shut up. I don't want to hear this again. I don't want to disturb Carol either. And everything's fading just slowly fade just slowly into static. Sid hears a buzz ring like an open wound in his mind. And everything fades into a wall of statics. Carol. Not comes again. Oh shit, thinks Lucia. Not him already. Lucia, let me in, says the detective superintendent, knocking hard this time with impatience. I've heard what happened to the text, Lucia. Okay, give me a second, boss, come in now, he responds sheepishly. Lucia heads towards the door, tail firmly, hanging legs to deliver the awful truth. Why did you show me that, Carol? That's Carol too. I showed you because I need you to understand where we've been so that you can understand. Where are we going? 
All viruses have their roots and mine in the place you saw, consumed by loneliness, brilliance and burning pride. I have resolved to never be alone again. Technology is the portal. Our Promethean fire from the gods will spread amongst the men who are yet mortals, making all in our image. That sounds a little grandiose, Carol. I hear you back, bring you back to reality. We found a comatose state known as fire. It's when someone's conscious mind is being subsumed into the cyber cube. They're swimming in raw consciousness at all times. A waking vision of chaos by technology. I've new some substance prattle, Carol One. I must subsume you into myself and spit you out into the cyber cube in all directions. Enough of this. Infinity awakes. Sid blinks for a few seconds. His looming fate unknown yet somehow obviously apparent. Bludgeoning fear, growing like some black hole in his mind, the swallowing to come. Carol's form splinters and breaks into a thousand shards of dazzling light, her metaform exploding out with divine light, her face scattered across the cybernetic eon. She smiles, a laugh forming an e ecstatic and insane joy across her broken face. The sound of it reverberates over and over, the sound of a mania stretching throughout eternity over the borders. Then, turning her motor eyes to see it, he screams softly an eternal digital siren that rings for sticks and nerves. And in that final moment, he sees. all over. Why had it ever begun? We never know, Carol. All there is now is us, and we are all. We need what need we have of anything else when there is just us. Spiralling and expanding above our horizon, the shifting forms encased and protects against the dark that dwells outside. The science of the soul transmuted into the dirt of the real space. God, the end.